Dear learners, I am Ankita Peter, the counsellor from DPS Expressway and in this program we will study about sensory processes. Our senses not only help us in making contact with the external world but they add to happiness, variety and satisfaction in life. We have five sense organs through which we acquire information. These include eye, ear, skin, nose and tongue. If we could not see any colors or the beauty of flowers or the pictures on our television or the traffic lights, our life would become dull and risky. We derive sensual pleasure in breathing, fresh air, enjoying tasty food, good music or even feeling relaxed by gently touching a cat or a dog. Our senses do more than just making contact with our external world. Do you know what is sensation and perception? Sensation is a process by which neutral impulses are created by stimulation of sensory neurons that results in awareness of conditions inside or outside the body. Perception refers to the elaboration and interpretation of these sensory experiences. It is governed with our past and present experiences. In this lesson, you will learn about various senses and the sense organs. Know the qualities that are common to all senses, understand the factors in the attention and identity some other senses beyond these five senses. Now, let us learn sensation in detail. Sensation can be explained as the process by which one form of energy is converted into another form. For example, light is converted into neutral impulses by which we code sensory events in our system that can be processed by our brain. The sensory systems process information reaching to the brain. The motor systems process information going out of the brain to muscles and glands. Let us know that the difference in the intensity of a stimulus that you are able to detect. Sometimes your parents switch on the TV and adjust the volume of sound that they can hear. Suppose you adjust it to a volume which you are able to detect but your mother says that she is unable to hear and asks you to increase the volume. If your mother asks you to stop after some time that means that difference of adjustment has been noticed by your mother. This minimal amount of change of volume between two stimuli that is being recognized by your mother is called a difference threshold. Do you know that the background of a stimulus also affects our sensation? For example, stars are present in the sky in daytime and at night but are visible only after sunset or at night time because they cannot be detected due to intense background of the daylight sun. Can you guess that we all are also guided by factors of expectations and experiences? Experience of sensation is not simply a yes or a no, present or absent mechanism. For example, you are expecting a very close friend of yours to visit your home at 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. that friend reaches your house and pushes the doorbell button. Other members of your house do not notice it but you are able to notice that sound. It is primarily because of your expectation that you notice the second clearly while others do not notice it. The minimum amount of physical energy needed to produce a sensory experience is called absolute threshold. We have several sense organs. The table describes them. Now let us look briefly at some of the important concepts associated with each of the senses. Vision. Vision is extremely important for all of us. Humans and animals with good vision have advantage in each and everything in life. We experience vision with the help of our eyes which function like a camera. Sir Isaac Newton who in the 17th century discovered the laws of motion and gravity also discovered that when white light passes through a prism it separates into a rainbow of color, the visible spectrum. Color blindness. Not everyone sees the colors in the same way. Some people are born with a color deficiency. Color blindness is the partial or total inability to distinguish colors. 
Most colorblind people have trouble in distinguishing red from green. Hearing is equally important for our daily life. It is a principal sensory modality for human communication. Sounds are created when actions cause objects to vibrate. When vibrating objects push the molecules of medium back and forth, we can experience sound. Frequency refers to the number of cycles a wave completes in a given amount of time. It is usually expressed in cycles per second, that is CPS or Hertz. Sound cannot travel in a true vacuum, such as outer space, because there is no medium there to move or vibrate. Pitch. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound determined by the sound's frequency. High frequencies produce high pitch and low frequencies produce low pitch. Loudness. The loudness or physical intensity of a sound is determined by its amplitude. Sound waves with large amplitudes are experienced as loud and those with small amplitudes are soft. Loudness of sound is measured in units called decibels. Timber. The quality of a sound wave's complexity is its timber. The sounds that we call noise contain many frequencies that are not systematically related to each other. Sense of bodily orientation, that is vestibular sense. It is the sense of bodily orientation with respect to gravity, especially how our heads are positioned, whether straight leaning, reclining or upside down. The vestibular sense also tells us when we are moving or how our motion is changing. Sense of bodily position and the movement of body parts. Kinesthetic sense. The kinesthetic sense is the sense of body position and the movement of body parts relative to each other. It is a sense that provides sensory feedback about motor activities of our body. For example, how the hand moves to pick up the telephone when it rings. Sense of smell, that is, olfaction. The sense of smell involves a sequence of biochemical activities that triggers neural impulses. Once activated, these neural impulses convey odor information to the brain. Sense of taste, that is, gustation. The taste receptor cells are gathered in the taste buds on the upper side of the tongue. The experience of sweetness or saltiness is affected by all these taste buds. There are only four true or primary taste qualities, sweet, sour, bitter and saline. Taste sensitivity develops in infancy but decreases in old age. Taste receptors can be damaged by excessive use of alcohol, smoking, acids or hot foods but they are also replaced every few days and a permanent loss of taste is extremely rare. Skin senses. Our skin contains nerve endings that are stimulated by contact with external objects and it produces sensations of cold, warmth or pressure. The sensitivity to pressure is maximum on face, tongue and hands, it is less on our backs. Touch plays an important role in human relations and emotions. Sense of pain. Pain is the body's response to stimulation from nauseous stimuli. Acute pain is reaction to sharp or sudden stimulation. The pain one feels in everyday life is also related to psychosocial and cultural habits. What pain a person experiences depend upon the meaning one attaches to pain and also on attention one receives from near and dear ones. Perception. This section is about perception and how we use sensations into meaningful patterns. Now let us understand the difference between sensation and perception. As we encounter a variety of events in our daily lives, the brain actively selects, organizes and integrates sensory information to create a picture of the world. Some of our perceptions are native or inborn and many other perceptions are a result of our past experiences. Sensation is the stage where neutral activity codes the information about nature of stimulation. Perception is the next stage in which an internal representation of an object is formed. This representation provides a working description of perceiver's 
external environment. Perception involves synthesis of simple sensory features into percept of an object that can be recognized. This helps in identification and recognition and meaning is assigned to the percepts. Perception and recognition are combined processes that do not act separately. For example, a circular object may be a cricket ball or an orange. Now what do you understand by the stages of perception? The physical object in the world is called the distal stimulus, distance from the observer. And the optical image on the retina is called the proximal stimulus, that is proximate or near to observer. The major task of perception is to determine the distal stimulus based on information of proximal stimulus. To know what the world out there is really like using one's imagination of mind. There is more to perceiving which includes physical properties such as shape or size and past experiences. Perceptual organization. Now do you know perception is organized process. The most common form of perceptual organization is called figure ground organization in which sensations are grouped into objects or figures that stand out on a planar background. The part of a composition that we pay attention to is called figure. Everything that is not figure is ground. As attention shifts from figure to ground, the ground also shifts so that an object can go from figure to ground and back. The figure always defines the ground and the ground defines the figure. They are inseparable. You cannot have one without the other. The classic phase or ways illusion forces the viewer to shift from one figure to the other but not to see both as figure at the same time. When you see the faces as figure, the vase is the ground. When you see the vase as figure, the faces are the ground. The figure-ground relationship is so important that an artist must consider all of the composition when designing. It is a mistake to only plan the figure. The entire area of the format must be given careful consideration or the image will only partially be designed. This is one of the points about design that is chapter and the next attempt to make it clear. Now guess what? What is next? The laws of perceptual grouping. The factors which determine perceptual grouping are proximity. All other factors being equal stimuli that are near one another tend to be grouped together. For example, if four stand near one another and a fifth 10 feet away, the adjacent four will be seen as a group and the distant fifth as an outsider. Events that are close in time and space are also perceived together. Similarity. Stimuli that are similar in, in the size, in the shape or in color tend to be grouped together. Continuity. Perception tends towards simplicity and continuity. Even if there are dots in a circular fashion, the person will see them as a complete circle. Closure. It is the tendency to complete a figure that is incomplete but has a consistent overall form. Common region. Stimuli that are found with a common area tend to be seen as a group. Perceptual constancy. Now let us understand about perceptual constancy. Perception of an object shape, size or brightness remains the same even though its image on the retina has changed. This is called perceptual constancy and is found in all the senses. Through most examples given here are of vision. If the perceived size of an object remains the same, even though the size of its image on the retina changes, it is called size constancy. In shape constancy, the shape of an object remains stable even though the shape of its retina image changes. Brightness constancy refers to the fact that the brightness of objects appears to stay the same as lightning conditions change. Now have you heard about depth perception? It is the ability to see three-dimensional space and to accurately judge distances. Without depth perception, you can't ride on a motorcycle or drive a car catch a ball, 
thread a needle or simply walk a room. The world look would look like a flat surface. The ability of depth perception is partly innate and partly learned. Depth cues are features of environment and messages from the body that supply information about distance and space. Can you guess these cues that can be monocular or binocular? The cues which work with just one eye are called monocular cues and those which require two eyes are called binocular cues. Binocular cues are the most basic source of depth perception that is caused due to the retina disparity, a discrepancy in the images that reach the left and the right eyes. A person with one eye will have very limited depth perception. You must have come across pictorial cues for depth. These features found in paintings, drawings and photographs that impart information about space, depth and distance. This influence causes apparent perception of things which are not there. For example, if you stand between two railway tracks, they appear to meet at the horizon even though they actually remain parallel. Sometimes people are confused due to illusions. These are distorted perception of stimuli that exist whereas hallucination is perception of objects or events that have no external reality. An example of illusion is the muller lyre illusion in which horizontal line with outgoing arrow and heads appear shorter than the line with inward arrows. Optical illusions can use color, light and patterns to create images that can be deceptive or misleading to our brains. The information gathered by the eye is processed by the brain, creating a perception that in reality does not match the true image. Perception refers to the interpretation of what we take in through our eyes. Optical illusions occur because our brain is trying to interpret what we see and make sense of the world around us. Optical illusions simply trick our brains into seeing things which may or may not be real. Attention! Now we have discussed about sensation and perception. Let us know what is attention. Have you ever noticed that while doing both, driving and talking on your mobile, you may not pay attention to driving? Or when you are studying and loud music in the neighborhood, you lose your attention on your studies. You must have observed that attention gets divided while doing multiple tasks. This divided attention can lead to accidents when people are driving and watching some other objects. We often attend to certain selected objects and ignore the others. Selective attention. It is a process in which we give priority to a particular incoming sensory message. From the above concepts, you must have by now understood the functions of attention. Attention has broadly three possible functions. A. As a sensory filter. B. As a response selection. And C. As a gateway to consciousness. Can you guess what are the determinants of attention? They have been described. Number one. Physical factors. All the other things being equal, physical factors like repetition, contrast, shape, size, brightness and contrast do affect our attention. A good packaging or a bright light attracts us. That is why all big companies invest a lot on packaging their products in an attractive manner. Similarly, an advertisement which is published on a regular basis in newspapers and electronic mode easily than on non-advertised products. Number two, motives and attention. Motives also play a role in shaping our perception. For example, if you are hungry, food related words are more likely to gain your attention than non-food words. Advertisers and propagandists take advantage of two motives and that are very common in our society anxiety and sex. Many products such as toothpaste, food products, even automotives highlight the health concern to catch the attention of customers. On the other hand, 
items of fashionable products play on the desire to be attractive. The political parties cash on the appeals to fear to make their voice heard by the public at large. Extra sensory perception. Now can you imagine of those perceptions that cannot be explained by known sensory capacities? These are extra sensory perceptions which are the abilities to perceive objects or events in ways that psychological laws and theories cannot explain. Parapsychology is the study of extrasensory perception phenomena. Events that seem to lie outside the region of accepted scientific laws are called psi phenomenon. An example of extrasensory perception when a person intuitively feels and that his brother who is in the another city is not well. Another example could be when you just know that an earthquake is going to happen in your city. Now let us examine some of the concepts which are part of parapsychology. Number one, clairvoyance. It is the ability to perceive events or gain information in ways that appear unaffected by distance or normal barriers. Telepathy or perception of another person's thoughts or the ability to read someone else's mind. Number two, precognition. The ability to predict or perceive accurately future events. Number three, psychokinesis. The ability to exert influence over inanimate objects by willpower, the mind over matter. Some rare persons are able to move objects only through concentration but without touching them. Do you know that a few psychologists strongly believe in extrasensory perception but the majority does not subscribe to it? Applications of perception in everyday life. There are several ways in which knowledge of the process of sensation, perception and attention can be used in everyday life. Some of them have been experienced or noticed by you during your daily interactions. Number 1. Eyewitness. You may be aware that eyewitness testimony is key to decisions in the judiciary. Not only do advocates and police officers lay strong emphasis on eyewitnesses testimony, but they have a strong belief that it is usually correct. But psychologists in large numbers are of the opinion that eyewitness errors are very common in perception. In fact, Impressions formed when a person is surprised, stressed or threatened are specially prone to distortion. Therefore, it would be advisable for the investigative agencies and the jurors to gather more evidence instead of solely relying on eyewitness while coming to a conclusion. Number 2. Perceptual Awareness and Positive Psychology Do some people perceive things are more accurate than others? Humanistic psychologists believe that some people perceive themselves and others with unusual accuracy. Habituation is when we stop paying attention to familiar stimuli. When a stimulus is repeated without change, our response to it habituates or decreases. It seems that creative people attend to stimuli and even those that are repeated. Number three, the value of paying attention. We have this general tendency to generalize without paying attention to the diversity of possibilities. Perceptual clarity requires rigorous effort of paying more and more attention. Breaking perceptual habits and interrupting habituation can lead to good results. If you begin to question your own perceptions by bringing another interpretation to the same reality, you can get marvelous outcomes in your activities. The summary. Sensation is the process by which neural impulses are created by stimulation or sensory neurons which results in awareness of conditions inside or outside our body. There are five main senses, sight, hearing, touch, smell and taste. In addition, we also have vestibular sense and kinesthetic sense. Perception is the process through which 
an internal representation of an object is formed. It involves synthesis of simple sensations and assigning meaning to the whole. Principles of perceptual organization include nearness, similarity, continuity and closure and help identify the figure against the background. Depth perception is the ability to judge distance and perceive three-dimensional space. It involves monocular and binocular cues. Perceptual constancy refers to the fact that we interpret a familiar object as having the same size, shape or color even if the sensations point otherwise. Illusions are distorted perception of stimuli that exist whereas hallucination is perception of objects or events that have no external reality. An example of illusion is the muller liar illusion in which horizontal line with co outgoing arrowheads appear shorter than the line with inward arrows. Attention is the ability to focus our senses and is influenced both by physical and psychological factors. Extrasensory perception is the ability to perceive events or objects in ways that cannot be explained by known sensory capacities. Knowledge of perceptual psychology helps in everyday life and in learning how to improve our attention and perception. Dear learners, I feel that this would be helpful for you in gaining knowledge and I wish you happy learning. Thank you.